So I'll share with you the nine steps that I call my old man creating videos that are good enough to be good enough in less than four hours. Step one, change how you shoot. Shoot with intention. Decide in advance what you need for your video and what the story is and create a punch list of the shots that you need to support that. For us, it's usually getting somewhere, being somewhere, a little cooking, a little about the RV, and a conclusion. You see, it's true you can't go back and film an eagle flying by if you're not filming when it happens. But when you're editing, there's nothing worse than having to scrub through two hours and looking at the sky hoping that that eagle did fly by and you caught it. In the past, we used to film four to five hours of raw footage from multiple cameras for every 20 to 25 minute episode. These days, we usually average less than two hours of raw footage, and on the good days, we can do an entire episode with less than an hour of raw footage, and sometimes only on the iPhone. Now here's an old man tip. Delete the bad shots and the duplicates and the out of focus and the things you don't need from the camera as you're filming. Take the time to do that. It'll save you a ton of time when you're doing the edit. Step two, organization. Put it all in a box. It's getting everything organized in one place. I use an iPad, so I create an album on the camera roll. Right now I'm working on our Sunday episode and it's called A Family Wedding, so that's what I'll name it here. Episode, A Family Wedding. And we're pretty lucky because 95% of our footage now comes from our iPhone 13 Pros. My iPad already has each of those shots, so I won't have to do anything other than add them to the album. For the other cameras, I simply highlight them in the Files app, select Save Videos instead of bringing them in as a file, and I'll add those to that exact same album. Old man tip. Well, it's time to clean up again. Delete the duplicates. Make sure things are in the right sequence. Double check that you have all the clips that you're going to need to be able to create your video or episode right now before you bring it into the timeline. And speaking of timeline, step three is creating your timeline in your editor. For me, that's LumaFusion, and there are a lot of reasons I use that. I'll import the album that we just created into that timeline. Old man tip, this is going to take a while to bring this in, so go do something else while this is happening. Now come back to step four. It's time to spend a little bit of time reviewing the footage. The first thing I do, I'll color code each segment so I can very easily look at it on the timeline and see what I have. For our wedding video, we had the getting to the wedding setting up in the campground, cooking hamburgers, the wedding, and some closing thoughts. So I'll highlight each of those areas and create them in a different color so I can see what I'm working with. Old man tip, don't watch each clip right here. Just scroll through and categorize, get an overall feel for what you have to work with. Step five for me anyway, is always go grab the music that we're gonna use for this episode. For us, music sets a mood for the episode. We use Epidemic Sound. I'll go to their website. Their suggestions based upon what I've downloaded in the past, well, the more I've used it, the better and better and better the recommendations have gotten, and they're usually really helpful. If I hear something there that sounds like it's gonna fit, I'll download it and import it into LumaFusion. A few more old man tips. Don't try to get all the music you need for your video right now. Just get the first or second one and get back to editing. Tip number two, listen for great music while you're doing other things like walking or riding around in your car or out on the water. Save them to a favorites folder. And tip number three, don't use too many soundtracks in your video. When you can, use the same one or different portions of it all the way through your video. It'll make things seem like they fit together better. Also, try not to use too many songs in your video that have vocals because those words are hard to edit around unless they set a tone for your clip. Step number six is creating the rough draft to edit. It involves creating a music track and bringing the music down, adjusting the volume as you think you need to. At this time, you're gonna decide how long each segment needs to be. I'll finish the segment and I'll move on. I'll grab more music if I need it and I'll repeat this until I finish a rough edit. Old man tip. Don't watch and re-watch the segments. Just get the music in place, trim the fat, and keep going. Tip number two, emotionally remove yourself from the edit. 
lose all the ah oh, that's cute syndrome only keep something if it tells a story and nothing more next comes step seven the initial review i'll make a copy or a snapshot of the timeline if possible have someone else review it with you for us that's called the lynn review both of you sit down and watch it together what works what doesn't work and as you're watching it formulate a plan for a final edit Make notes and make sure you jot down the timestamps for those edits so you don't have to look for them. Old man tip, listen to your reviewer. Don't sit there and try to explain why you had this shot or this sequence or why you use this music. If your reviewer doesn't get it, then it's likely that your viewers won't get it either. Number two, if you're not sure about a sequence or a segment, then just remove it and see if you miss it. If you do, put it back in. If you don't, you didn't need it anyway. The final edit happens for us in step number eight, where we're preparing everything for release. This is when everything comes together. It starts to look and feel like a finished episode. I'll use the notes that we've created to make those final edits. I'll record any voiceovers or talking heads that we need and we'll put them in the timeline. I'll add any titles if we need them. I'll also balance the sound between segments and talking sections. This is also the time that I'll do a little bit of color correction for all the clips. Unless you're an expert in color correction, I would suggest keeping it simple. Fix the white balance and apply your favorite LUT and move on. Once you finish the color correction step, go back to the beginning of the video and watch different parts of it briefly. Don't watch the entire thing, but skip through and make sure you haven't really messed anything up by making your edits. Make sure the overall feel is still there. And then render your video. Be confident that this is the one you're going to upload, so use the settings you're going to want to have in place for your upload. Old man tip, resist the urge to watch as you're editing now. You're committed, so just trust your gut, do the edits, and do the render. You'll watch it later. And it's time for the final review, and to save just a little bit more time, I always try to do this from YouTube if I can, but that depends on our Wi-Fi speed. If we have a fast Wi-Fi connection, then I'll upload that rendered video to YouTube and Lynn and I will review it from there. If on the other hand, we have a slow Wi-Fi connection, then we'll review the rendered video and upload it after we're happy with it. When you're reviewing, look for places someone other than your mom might skip or stop watching. Also, this is the time that we look for major errors. Are there loud pops in the video? Misspelled words? Is the overall balance between the volume of all the sections the same? Those kind of things. Old man tip. For us, our goal is good enough for good enough, not perfect for a major film. Unless the things you find here are major things, leave it and make a note to not do that one bad thing in the next video and call this one done. If there are major things wrong, go back to step eight and repeat these two steps until you're happy. So that's how I edit our videos in less than four hours, every episode, every week. Before you jump off to go watch something else, let me leave you with three guiding principles. First, film with intention, getting what you plan to shoot and nothing more. Second, edit it like editing is your job and it's not your video. Concentrate on making quality episodes as opposed to perfect cuts and edits. And number three, Anything you learn doing this video, apply it to the next video so it's better. But be okay with there being something in this one that you learn. Because every week, you probably want to learn something else anyway.